the Dirk Blinker Show. Welcome back to the Dirk Blinker Show. I'm Dirk Blinker. My next guest tonight in this cavalcade of experts presenting to you the facts about what's really going on out there, paranormal investigator Mary St. Johnson. You know her, you love her. She's a weekly contributor to the Dirk Blinker Show. And Mary and I have had some wonderful times together. That time in Cancun with the, <laughs> the Inca pyramids and, well, we won't go into that. Please. Welcome to the show, Mary. Good to see you, Dirk. How are you? I, I'm doing fine. And I want to let you know that tonight's show is sponsored by Aquafina, which itself is sponsored by Niagara Falls. You know the gravity at which that water falls over the falls is what filters out the Aquafina water. I didn't know that. It's good for you, it's good for me. And the company wants you to know that. So from the bottom of the falls, Aquafina. Okay. Or is it Aquafina? I it wouldn't know. Just doesn't matter. This is the Dirt Blinker Show. Mary, as usual, has come up with a story that, that listeners, I, I've got to tell you, hits like a meteor right between the eyes. Mary, you say a meteor hit Cleveland 50 million years ago, do you not? I do. You know, one of the things that I like to do best is, is talk to you about some of the things I find that are just right here around our own area. And this, this story that I came across was a, a meteor that hit Cleveland, the Cleveland area 50 million years ago. Mm -hmm. And at the time, Cleveland, which wasn't Cleveland at all, of course, was covered with sea, so just that, water. That's right. There was no Jacobs Field. <laughs> Nothing at all. Sandy Alomar had not yet hit a home run. Absolutely not. Not. And just sea. Disappeared underneath, was never seen, no crater, no nothing, no one knew it was here. No remnants? Now you're saying, you're telling me right now, Mary, tonight, you're telling the blinker heads that this meteor is still under Lake Erie? I think the, the meteor itself is there. But the story that goes along with that meteor turned into just, you know, quite a story. Show, or uh, actually share that right now, if you could, with our listeners. Well, I think, like I said, that they, this, this meteor hit and everyone thought that it was a meteor until, I'm going to say roughly two months ago, when a, a, a mining company uh, that mines underneath Lake Erie came across this meteor, which in fact, Dirk, not, not a meteor at all. But not a meteor at all? Not a, a meteor at all, but an alien spaceship. That is amazing. <laughs> not only that, the alien spaceship was still harboring an alien, still alive, and the men had to fight for their lives to get out of that ship. Listeners. Get out of that tunnel, I'm sorry. Do you hear what she's saying? The alien was still alive, fighting to get to surface. What happened? <laughs> the men somehow were able to kill the uh, alien and keep it from getting to the surface. Uh, think about this. I think that what's happened is that if they let that alien get to the surface, to the fresh water, right. uh, it would just keep coming back to life. If they could kill it before then, because all the salt has settled now, it was used to being in the sea, down in the salt and things. If it got to the fresh water, it would keep coming alive. So they had to kill it before it could get up to the surface of the water. I saw, I saw a story, a documentary. It was called Gremlins. It was the same thing. The water touched the gremlins. More gremlins appeared. They seemed to multiply. I think that's exactly it. The men were just really truthfully grateful to get away with their lives. That's amazing. Most of them won't even talk about it. I think they're afraid that alien still has a chance. Could we talk to them? Do they want the, their I, identities no, known? No, they absolutely do not. They are, they're afraid that that alien may sometime hit fresh water and get its you know, ninth life, 15th life, who knows how many lives, and seek them out. I, they can seek them out and kill them. You, you, you see them, you're, you're in the backyard, you're barbecuing, you're having kebabs. I like the chicken. The beef's okay, but I like the chicken. There's a knock at the front door, and it's the alien, the one that you tried to keep under the lake. I tell you, my stomach just gets nervous thinking about it. It's amazing. They, they could just come from anywhere, and, and here they were just doing their job mining, and there was this ship and this alien, and, and, and next thing they do is fighting for their lives. Do the Morton Salt people have anything at all to do with this? Do they know anything about this? I wouldn't this? know. I, I don't really think anybody wants the name of the company. Yeah, let's keep to, the name brands yeah, out of this scenario. To uh, know, know what kind of a company it was mining, but... Oh, well, let me ask you this for just a moment. When we were in Cancun, did you enjoy the lobster bisque? Oh, Dirk, you know that I did. Okay, that's, that's the point I'm trying to make, listeners. That Mary doesn't mix words. She's talking lobster. She's talking aliens from Lake Erie. I believe her. This is the Dirk Blinker Show. We're taking a call right now. Altoona, go ahead. 
Hello, caller. Mary's waiting for you now. Paranormal investigator, go ahead. Put your question out, would you please? Mary, I, I sense a little problem with the lister. Do you think possibly maybe the alien could be at their door now? I don't know. I don't think so. Come on, Dirk. If there's, one, if there's a minor listening to the sound of my voice right now, please call us on the wild card line. We're waiting to hear from you. Mary, as always, until next week, you are the paranormal investigator of my life. Oh, thanks, Dirk.